see if you can't get this in here. I'm gonna be fixing this light here. Keep coming. Ugh. Hold on, cut it. All right, here's what we're working on today. Get this guy cut off. All three corn. Well, I guess there's only. Oh, I'm gonna get in there. But cut that off. We're gonna be replacing this. Um, fuel price is too high, so not running today. There ain't shit on the board either. So you got paint for for this guy or? Okay. Um, all the wiring still seems like it's intact, but these guys use these connectors here, and then that's why they rot out. The what? You won't need a jacket now. Oh, that has so, a plug. Yeah. So we'll get all that okay. cut out. I'm gonna have to like wedge this out to uh, to get to that one there, but we'll bring the Milwaukee saw in and cut it off pretty good. So try to leave some meat. All right. So long story short, okay, I'm trying to keep myself busy and trying to keep income flowing um, while the prices are just astronomically high. I have seen. Damn close, if not $6 a gallon at this point since yesterday's video was posted. And I can't justify it. Even if I can afford to run, it costs $400 a day, if not more, because I gotta take the turnpike every day because I go to Pittsburgh and New Jersey. So, in the meantime, working on getting my trailer re-registered up in Maine. I am working on getting my truck inspected and I've ordered all of the paperwork because you guys told me that I could self inspect a DOT inspection. So that's what I'm gonna do. I am going to go and get both inspections done. I've got 10 papers ordered and I apologize, but I gotta do what I gotta do. Like I can't, I cannot justify paying $400 a day to work. I can't. Um, when the prices come back down, I'm going to try to get back on the road. I am currently still looking for loads. So basically, I'm waiting to hear back uh, from Justin. I'm leased under. And my insurance is only 320 bucks a month. So I got to see what makes sense to do, what they want to do. Because the whole point was to be local. I worked all last year to make sure that it was possible to be a local driver. And then I finally did it and everything was working out my first month. I did really good. You know, I was pumping out loads like crazy. Everything was good, you know? So I'm just sitting, doing as much work as I can to keep it flowing, uh, keep the videos coming out for you guys so you guys understand. And just know that I'm basically one of you guys, you know? I am just a guy trying to figure out the next best, or, well, how to keep life pretty much going. Um, we're gonna be working out of this thing today and fixing this light. They hit a semi, and this took months before it finally came in. So we're gonna cut that off and re-weld the new one on it. Here's where we are at. All of this is cleaned off. So straight metal. Same with up here. That one, that one, and that one. So get her welded up. Go from there. The old mangled one. Probably use that to set up the welder. All right, so we are headed out to go and get some welding gas because whoopsies, the welding gas that we have is completely empty. No idea because I didn't use it. But we have some good news and I need your guys' help on this one because you guys know that I'm doing the $250 a week is what I pay for my trailer. I owe 1500 bucks on it, so I'm about to pay it off. But here's the catch, okay? Cars took a dump everywhere. I just talked to Justin, the guy who owns the company I'm leased under, and 
we have a couple of options. I can lease a freight trailer out through him, or why lease a trailer when I can lease to own a trailer? So if any of you guys out there have a decent 40 foot trailer and I can put a kingpin on it, I'm looking for one. And I'd like to do the same 250 a week, you know, the same bullshit, um, if possible. If anybody knows something like that, let me know. Um, you certainly don't have to. This is just something I'm putting out there. I'm sure someone somewhere is going to criticize it, but I've made all my payments on time on my trailer and it's almost paid off. So it's time to do the same thing with the second one. I didn't want to go to freight, but unfortunately, uh, it's it's definitely going to be a must. It's either that or I have to quit hot shotting altogether because of these fuel prices. It's not worth spending $400 a day. So we're going to try to cut out New Jersey and the turnpike to try to get the overhead cost every day down. So let me know what you guys got. I would really like a triple axle flatbed, but if we can't find anything, then it's not a super big deal. You know, I can deal with a tandem. Uh, doesn't matter if it's dually or not. I just need to be able to get the registration on it down to 17,000. So let me know what you guys got. Looks like we're gonna be moving to freight and it's gonna get pretty interesting because I'm gonna be doing freight and be home every day. So we'll see how that works. Obviously not gonna make a million billion dollars, but you can see that three to 4,000 gross every week if possible. So let me know what you guys got. If you know anybody that's willing to do that and wants something sold, you know, let me know. I'm good for it. No, MIG, MIG gas. We've got our empty, that bottle is so empty. It's not even funny. Like I can literally, look at this. I'm gonna open the cap and it's just, oh, there ain't nothing in it. It's that empty. I don't know how someone must have left the bottle open. Back, but we got two bottles. Booyah. Also, my e-brake. That swap was 100% worth it. Look at that. This thing had been gone by now had it had not, had not swapped axles. Ugh, just in case you guys thought I was lying. No foot. Look at this. Ready? Oh, we're rolling. All right, so we got it done. Um... I'm gonna get criticized. That welder sucks. I was able to get the corners. No, get that out of there. I was able to get the corners perfect because I'm really good with a grinder. But unfortunately, the welder, it's like, so what happens is, no matter how I've tuned it, you weld and you start up here and it's always constantly dripping. So that's where we're fighting, but it's not going anywhere. trying to break it off and it won't break so all the wiring here by the way if you guys have a trailer with these types of connectors on them get rid of them that is garbage look at that so all done new lights it's gonna bondo over that and then you know paint it all nice and whatnot but this was definitely done with a 220 and even that looks like shit but yeah you definitely want a 220 for this so, measurements from here to here was seven and seven eighths. So, this one is perfectly matched to that one. And used a jack stand to get that in the perfect position. So, all right, so I got here this morning to take this thing and I called the storage unit that said I could bring it there. And I called him because I think the guy gave him a BS story and said, you know, it just doesn't run and drive. And they're like, you know, whatever. So I called them today and they're like, yeah, so no rear axle. They said it has to be in at least a looking running condition. So we're kind of SOL. The dash is, by the way, sold. We have that coming pickup and the old HVAC for my truck is also sold. So I'm just waiting for him to come pick it up. Passenger seat finally sold. So he's coming to pick it up Friday. Cab, frame, bed. Guys, come and get this stuff so I can buy another trailer. So, if any of this stuff sells, I'll be able to put money down on another trailer, but I am still looking. I will, uh, 100%. We need another trailer. And then I need to lease my trailer out, so unfortunately it's got to happen. Um, I would like a tri-axle freight trailer just because I can play around with the numbers a little more, like 17K, but a dually tandem is a heavy trailer. So, I was thinking about getting an Iron Bull triple axle with the overfenders like I used to have. But let me know what you guys think. I did like my Iron Bull. It was like 7,400 pounds. So it was like right in the middle of a decent freight trailer. But also a light car trailer. It's what you do when the operator can't weld 
<laughs> I got the sides perfect. Like, perfect, perfect. But, cover up them shitty chicken scratch welds. All right, great news. So, truck running great. Um, realized that it was kind of sluggish because of the throttle cable, so quick adjustment on that. Thing rips like 32 pounds of boost immediately. Trailer's done and fixed. He got, uh, he put a little bit of Bondo on that. If I had my old 220 welder, I used to be able to put out like actually decent looking welds. Just, I, I cannot for the life of me figure out that little two, uh, that little 110. And anytime you're trying to weld with it uphill or downhill, it's just constantly dripping no matter how. Like I'll be using it and adjusting it at the same time, trying to get it to go better. And it just, for what it is, I can't. Um, maybe there's too much heat to it. I don't know. But it is what it is. Judge how you want. And let me know what you guys have. Uh, think of for trailer wise. I definitely would like to find something. Um, even if it's not like as new as mine. Like mine's a 2020 now. And I will try to get like the, all the lease paperwork figured out. That way like it's all legal. Um, and I'm protected. As well as having a GPS tracker in the trailer. Or multiple GPS trackers just to be safe. But before I send it out I'd like to redo the bearings. And you know make sure everything's perfect and good to go so wiring is easy to diagnose now in that trailer since it is all you know done with junction boxes i really i, I did not expect the car market to take a, take a turn like this i was really expecting that if fuel prices went up rates should have went up with it but cars tanked freight's king so that's what we're going to do we're just going to go with freight um and that was with the advice of the guy at least under if none of you guys have a trailer uh, I can lease one for 125 bucks a week, so there's that. Uh, I have a 34 footer right now that I could lease, but I would rather lease to own something. And a 34 foot, I'd rather just have a 40 because then at least it's valuable for me later in case I want to lease that out as well. So let me know what your guys' suggestions are. Everything's good. Um, we'll see. We'll see how the future goes. I'm not going to make any promises on it because, like, I, I, I know what I wanted to do this year. And it just, this is not looking as promising as it was in January. So, hopefully it all works out. Hope you guys enjoy it. Like I said, go uh, check out my Amazon affiliate links down in the description. And I will see you in the next video. Safe travels. See you. All right, so if you stuck around this long in the video, I get it's not very long of a video, but you know, I do appreciate you guys for sticking around this long. So we got some updates. I just spoke with Justin. A lot of you guys asked me, okay? You asked me, how am I leased under a company, but I'm not running. I'm not making any money for them. I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. So it's simple, two things. One, insurance is super cheap. I am covered for 1 million liability and 1 million cargo, okay? I do cars, obviously moving over to freight, but my insurance is 320 bucks a month, 100%. I have everything to prove it, to back it up. I've done work with brokers that you really do have to prove that you're able to do the loads and you have the proper insurance and whatnot. Like there is a lot of harder brokers that we do work for. So there's that, that's reason number one. Number two, this the company that I'm leased under, um, he specifically reached out to me a while back the, the, out of like 15 companies, um, basically knowing that I kind of do my own thing. Um, the insurance bill gets paid every month and he doesn't rely on one or two or three drivers to pay the bills. This company has like 16 drivers. I have my own insurance policy with them for this specific area because you can only put 10 drivers on an insurance policy. So they have 10 drivers on one, there's five drivers on the other, and I have my own up here in Pennsylvania for local covered for like 300, uh, 400 mile radius it is. So that's why, it really does not matter if I was running or not. Yes, it sucks to not be running, I really wouldn't wanna be running, but we just had a good conversation for about an hour, hour and a half, uh, we were speaking, and uh, we were having a phone conversation. And realistically, so we're trying to go another route, basically like I could, literally just pay the insurance and I'd be all right. Like that's how good, um, super understanding. And the whole reason that he leased me on was basically because I could do whatever I needed to do and knowing that YouTube would t be a primary source of income at some point. Um, so with that being said, I spoke to him, I can lease on, or I can lease a 34 foot flatbed trailer, 34, 36, I can't remember, 34, 36 foot flatbed trailer, for 120 some dollars a month or a week sorry a week but it would make more sense 
to lease out a trailer, lease a trailer that I could own. Now, the thing is, we were talking about it, and I said, okay, you know this area better than I do. Lengths, what makes sense? Reusable purpose, say I want to stop using it and lease it out down the road, okay? And a few other things, like what makes sense? CDL is obviously going to be the king in the couple of years. Like they are going to get rid of non-CDL. It is going to happen. Whether people want to believe it or not, it is going to happen. Non-CDL is going to stop being a thing. So I need a trailer that is going to last me pretty much a lifetime and be practical. So the only thing that makes sense, if I want to lease a trailer out, a triple axle does not make sense. Why does it not make sense? Because I can take care of a triple axle. I understand how they work. But if you go and lease out a triple axle to just any Joe Schmo, um, you're going to get that trailer destroyed very, very quickly. Bushings, bearings, axles, tie, like you you name it, and they're going to destroy it. I know how to turn my triaxle that it's okay and that I can make it last for a very long time. Ever since I've replaced all the tires with new ones, I've never had a problem. It was only the old tires that were always giving me an issue, so I've since replaced all of them, and now I haven't had an issue. But... I need to find a very trustworthy driver to lease my Kaufman out to. So that is going to happen. But that's number one. Ten, or triple axle is out of the question just because of the fact if I turn around and lease it. Now we're talking, okay, how about a tandem axle single wheel uh, trailer? That also does not make sense because the whole point is non-CDL is going to be out in a little bit. But since my GVWR and my truck is only 9,000, I can get away with a 17,000 pound trailer. So... And we were talking, he said, if you're going to lease out a trailer, you know, if you're going to use it in a couple of years or even a year or so, just get the 40 footer off the back business standpoint. It makes sense. Obviously it's a little heavier. I'll get a little less fuel mileage, but I'll be able to lease it out down the road. Whereas if I try to lease out a 30 or 35 footer, they will outgrow it completely makes sense. So we're looking for a 40 foot tandem dually, basically a gooseneck trailer. Um, I'll buy a kingpin for it if, if needed, but I do want to do a lease to own um, something around the ten thousand dollar price range, and two fifty a week is what I was paying for mine. That's what I would like to do. Um, if you, if anybody is close to that and has any other ideas or something that you think we could make work, let me know. I'm also one of the things is like I'm heavily investing my money into crypto right now while like the world is just a shit show. So I'm hoping that that pays off in like a year or two or three down the road. So I'm just investing whatever I can into that um, for like future down the road. Like that, I want to invest into real estate down the road. So that's why I'm setting a bunch of money aside. And that's why it looks like pretty much I have no money because all of it. I try to put as much of it as possible into there. Um, so trying to be smart budgeting wise. So that's my stipulations. 40 footer tandem dually trailer gooseneck. If you have anything, I, I don't care um, if it's something that's going to be, you know, preferably decent condition. I don't want to have to rebuild a trailer that I'm leasing, but I don't want a deal that someone's going to say halfway through, hey, I want my trailer back. Like, absolutely. If I miss a payment, you know, I don't have to pay the money back and you can repo your trailer. Like, that's perfectly fine. We can have that in the agreement. Um, at the same time, I don't want it to be like, hey, you've made all your payments this far and I've also put money into the trailer to keep it going but I want my trailer back. So at that point, yeah, I would kind of want, you know, some of the, you know, at least half of the money back or something like that. But that's where the lease agreement comes in. Um, so that would be something that whoever has that available, let me know. So besides that, that's what makes sense. Um, let me know what you guys think. But like I said, we are definitely going to hit the freight game pretty strong. Appreciate you guys for watching this long. As always, go check out my Amazon affiliate links down in the description. Go check out my Coinbase code. Um, nice thing about Coinbase is swapping, you know, your cryptos around and they cover your fees and stuff. So that's kind of why I've been using them. Um, that's basically it. So if you guys enjoyed safe travels, see you in the next video later.